Let me say up front that I'm in no way saying that no Special Forces Commando has ever stealthily infiltrated an enemy stronghold exclusively via kayak without ever setting foot on land. I mean, if such a soldier exists, they must be such a badass that no one has ever seen them and lived. But for the sake of argument, let's say it's a goofy premise for a VR stealth game. And Phantom Covert Ops leans into it hard enough that it sort of works. Given the fact that you're effectively half man, half boat, it's been musing how seriously Phantom Covert Ops takes itself. You've got the amazingly generic name, and the paint-by-numbers Tom Clancy story about a former Soviet madman planning a biological weapons attack is played 100% straight. It's practically self-parody. But they never did find the general's body. I called a goddamn airstrike on that son of a bitch. Where Phantom does stand out is in how you sneak around. Propelling yourself through the water is kind of fun once you get over how ridiculous waving a virtual kayak paddle looks to anybody watching. I ended up getting into it, even putting my feet up on a footstool to simulate sitting in a kayak. It's kinda cool to build up some speed, then hold the A button on the right controller and dip a paddle to make tight turns. But, in a lot of ways, dealing with the inertia of your boat while trying to avoid spotlights is like if Agent 47 were trying to be sneaky while wearing ice skates. Getting the hang of stopping when you need to stop is not without its frustrations. So it's probably a good thing that, as stealth games go, this is a fairly simple and forgiving one. Granted, AI needs to be predictable and robotic for successful stealth to feel like solving a puzzle rather than just getting lucky, but these guys are hilariously dumb. Your binoculars mark enemies for you, and they're all but completely blind unless you float directly into their flashlight beams or zoom by them at top speed. I was glad Phantom doesn't use the Rift's microphone to pick up sound, because I was usually laughing in their faces at how brazenly I could just cruise by under their noses. How are you not seeing me, man? Hey, stop Sometimes just sailing by isn't an option, but there are usually highlighted objects you can shoot to create a diversion and draw them away. Failing that, you've always got a silenced pistol that can drop all but the most armored of enemies with a single headshot. Zero two, focus on stealth. Avoid conflict wherever possible. You even get about five seconds of slow motion to take out whoever just spotted you. That doesn't mean it's always easy. If you get cocky and don't stop and recognize patterns in enemy movements, you can easily find yourself taken by surprise, and you die quick. A couple of boss fight segments killed me multiple times as I figured out how to avoid invulnerable attack helicopters and snipers. And the real challenge is running up the score by completing a level quickly, silently, and non-lethally. On my first playthrough, I only scored 1A. So even though the campaign is only about 4 or 5 hours long, that's where the replayability comes from, and I could see myself chasing a few better scores. It is kind of odd that, for most of Phantom 7 missions, you are armed to the teeth. A silenced pistol, an assault rifle, and sometimes a silenced sniper rifle, or another fun toy or two are strapped to your body and boat, and you'll often have explosives you can toss. Usually I had much more ammunition than I could carry, which was confusing because this is a game about avoiding firefights. You're actually penalized for unnecessary kills in the post-mission scoring screen. What am I supposed to do with all these bullets? I did like being given permission to take out certain VIP war criminals when their identities were revealed by a scan but otherwise my guns didn't get much use beyond creating diversions by shooting marked targets. I didn't see a ton of diversity to the levels, because they're all set in the dark of night within a dingy, flooded Soviet military base. That doesn't leave a lot of room for creativity in the design, especially since everything has to be accessible without the use of your legs. It does introduce a few hazards, like mines, to keep you from getting too complacent, though those were so easy to avoid that I never actually ran into one. It doesn't help that even on the Rift S running off a of GeForce RTX 2080 with the settings maxed out, Phantom doesn't look fantastic. Texture resolution gets obviously low when you get close to a wall, and soldier animations are bare bones. Notably, for such a wet game, there's not much by way of wake and splash effects. But the trade-off is you can play on the modestly powered Oculus Quest, too. When you're done with the campaign, there are a bunch of simple shooting gallery and timed kill em all challenges you can unlock and compete in. Plus, you get the free play option that lets you revisit any of the levels with any equipment you choose. Those extras do manage to make it feel a little meatier. Phantom Covert Ops is certainly a novel approach to a VR stealth game. Putting you in a stealth kayak to sneak up on ex-Soviet terrorists is a concept I did not see coming, and neither do the virtually night-blind enemy soldiers you're up against. It's a bit simple even for its short length, and it doesn't look as sharp as some other recent VR games. But the kayak is pretty fun when you get the hang of it, and chasing those high scores adds some replay value. For more on VR games, check out our reviews of Half-Life Alex and The Walking Dead Sinners and Saints. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Yes! Look at those fireworks!
Murder Canoe, Murder Canoe. When there's a murder you want to do, you should call the Murder Canoe. Watch out, here comes the Murder Canoe.